Random House Audio presents Dad is Fat by Jim Gaffigan. This is Jim Gaffigan. Dedication and Acknowledgement This book is dedicated to Jeannie. For me, it feels silly and possibly insulting dedicating this book to or acknowledging Jeannie here. It doesn't do justice to Jeannie's participation in Dad is Fat. This book really was our book. Jeannie not only made me a father and a better comedian, she made me an author. Yes, she is a magic genie. If you are a fan of Jeannie, you will hear her voice in this book. For your sake, I removed all of the yelling. The image of Jeannie sitting at her computer, turning my insane drivel into coherent essays, while breastfeeding newborn Patrick, will stay with me forever. I don't know how I got so lucky to have Jeannie as a writing partner, lover, and friend, but I scored big. She really has ended up being a fantastic first wife. Forward Jim Gaffigan wrote a book? Isn't he the Hot Pocket guy? I bet he regrets doing that joke. Hot Pockets! I guess that's funny to some people. Why would he write a book? Why would they let him write a book? He doesn't even seem like he's read a book before. Well, maybe a cookbook. <laughs> Actually, he seems too lazy to cook. Maybe an eating book. <laughs> I guess they let anyone write books now. That is, if he actually wrote this book. He probably just talked to some ghostwriter and they turn it into something readable. He looks like a ghost. Is he really that pale? I don't know what's going on with the cover and title. Dad is fat? I mean, obviously he's fat. Wait. Is this the guy with, like, ten kids? Either way, it's just weird to have so many kids today. I hope this isn't one of those complain-about-your-kids books. Or even worse, one of those sappy, I love my kids books. Ugh. Funny, I never say ugh. Oh, I see what he's doing. He's talking for me, the listener. That's why he's doing an annoying voice. I certainly wouldn't do that in the forward of a book. Letter to my children Dear children, I am your dad, the father of all five of you pale creatures. Given how attractive and fertile your mother is, there may be more of you by the time you listen to this book. If you are listening to this, I am probably dead. I would assume this because I can honestly foresee no other situation where you'd be interested in anything I've done. Right now, you are actually more interested in preventing me from doing things like working, sleeping, smiling. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> kind of. I love you with all my heart, but you are probably the reason I'm dead. All right, you didn't kill me. Your mother did. She kept getting pregnant. I don't know how. Don't think about it. It'll give you the willies. At one point, I was afraid she got pregnant while she was pregnant. She was so fertile, I didn't even let her hold avocados. Anyway, this is a book all about what I observed being your dad when you were very young and I had some hair back in good old 2013. So why a book? Well, since you've come into my life, you've been a constant source of entertainment while simultaneously driving me crazy. I felt I had to write down my observations about you in a book, and also for money, so you could eat and continue to break things. By the way, I'm sorry I yelled so much and did that loud clapping thing with my hands. I hated when my dad would do the loud clapping thing with his hands, so every time I do the loud clapping thing, it pains me in many ways. Most of the pain is because that loud clapping thing actually hurts my hands. You may be wondering how I wrote this book. From a very early age, you all instinctively knew I wasn't that bright of a guy. Probably from all the times you had to correct me when I couldn't read all the words in The Cat in the Hat. Hell, I find writing emails a chore. Thank you, Spellcheck. <laughs> I wrote this book with the help of many people, but mostly your mother. Your mother is not only the only woman I've ever loved, but also the funniest person I know. When your mom was not in labor yelling at me, she made me laugh so hard. Love, Dad. P.S. How did you get that hula hoop into that restaurant Easter 2011? Who's Who in the Cast? Jim Gaffigan. Dad. Jim feels honored to be playing the title role of Dad. Prior to being cast in Dad is Fat, Mr. Gaffigan also had the title role in the long-running show Mediocre Uncle. 
He is thrilled to be given this opportunity to work with the fine cast of Dadis Fan. He has virtually no training, skills, or instincts on how to play this role. New York Times. Jeannie Noth Gaffigan. Mom, director, producer, costume, hair and makeup design, casting director, technical director, catering, music and lyrics, usher, choreographer, additional music and lyrics. Miss Noth Gaffigan also coaches Jim Gaffigan in the role of dad. Mari Gaffigan, oldest ensemble founding member of Dad is Fat Company. Miss Gaffigan is an eight-year-old third grader and an amazing dancer. Off-Broadway, I once had my own bed. Jack Gaffigan, first son, ensemble, sound design, and special effects. Jack was last seen in Yelling for No Reason at All. He is six and would like to thank God for his incredible good looks, which earned him the leading role in the hit show I'm Too Cute to Punish. Katie Gaffigan, middle child, ensemble. Katie is three years old and was the inspiration for the song You Are My Sunshine. She would like to thank the creators of Scooby-Doo and The Color Green. Michael Gaffigan, Gateway Baby, Ensemble. Michael is a one-year-old and has been dazzling audiences since his 2011 debut. He would like to thank everyone who encouraged him to pursue his childhood dream of playing with a ball. Patrick Gaffigan, Newborn, Ensemble. Patrick is the newest cast member, a truly tireless performer. He has been with the company for only weeks, but has already won the award for Most Colicky Newborn, 2012. Setting. Present day, a tiny, crowded, two-bedroom apartment on the Bowery in downtown Manhattan. There will be no intermission, ever. Rue the Day when I was single, I was convinced my friends who took the plunge and had their first baby were victims of an alien abduction, because they would disappear from the planet and reappear a year later as unrecognizable strangers. Of course, that may have been because I was too into the X-Files. When I initially started dating Jeannie, the notion of settling down and having children became a feasible reality for me. Coincidentally, I was invited to visit one of my close childhood friends, who had been abducted by aliens, I mean, who got married and had a kid about a year earlier. My friend, his wife, and their one-year-old baby had settled in the Southwest. I was working in L.A., so a weekend visit was totally doable. I thought it would be great if I brought Jeannie. We could see what it would be like when we got married and had a baby. My friend Tom, name changed to protect his identity and hopefully preserve the friendship, suggested that we could drive out and hike the Grand Canyon which to me sounded unnecessarily difficult and way too outdoorsy, but I knew active Jeannie would love it. Jeannie and I arrived at night. We were much later than expected due to a flight delay. As we entered Tom's darkened house, we were instructed to please be quiet as to not wake the baby. I felt like a teenager sneaking back into my parents' house after a missed curfew. We silently tiptoed into a guest room, giggling, I feel like we're in trouble, Jeannie whispered. Once we settled in the room, Tom came in and said good night, announcing that we would be leaving around 7 a.m. for the Grand Canyon, so he wanted to get a good night's sleep. As Tom shut the door, Jeannie looked at me confused and said, I thought you said we would have dinner or something. I looked at my watch. It was 9 p.m. I thought, well, the, he's a parent. I guess this is what parenting involves. This must be what grown-ups do. They skip their second dinner. The next morning, at the crack of 7 a.m., we set off to make the long, scenic drive to the Grand Canyon. Tom Saab was seated with men in front and the ladies in back, with the one-year-old in the car seat between them. I suppose the first really big red flag of the trip was the fact that there was one CD allowed to be played in the car. It was explained to us that this CD was meant to soothe the baby. The volume would be occasionally adjusted based on the baby's needs. Uh, okay. So we drove and drove, talking and listening to songs with lyrics like ding-a-ding-a-dong, ding-a-ding-a-dong. If you haven't driven through the Southwest, the only thing more awe-inspiring than the beauty of the landscape is the absence of people. You can drive for hours and never see another person. Restaurants are scarce, expensive, and provide little selection. 
When we stopped for an early lunch, I ate...